Hey everybody, how's it going today? It is me, Captain Energy, and today we are taking a look at Cubase. The reason I'm using Cubase right now is because I'm working on a little bit of a spooky track for Halloween. Now, usually I would use uh, Cubase and I'd use a bunch of VSTs, but right now I've been using my CS1X a lot. So I decided to use the CS1X as the sound source for this track. Now, if you've tried to use the CS1X for the sound source for your track, you would notice that you have two modes of operation on the CS1X. There is the performance mode and there is the multi mode. In the multi mode, you have general instruments like xylophone, saxophone, trumpet, all the general MIDI type instruments, XG instruments, that type of thing. Those are great, but if you're trying to do something with an electronic music feel, you really want to be able to use the performance mode, but you can't combine the two. And the performance mode only shows up as one voice initially on the CS1X when you're using it with a MIDI DAW. Now, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to just let you take a peek at this. What I've got going on up here is various instruments. Right now, I've got a, a 909 drum kit. I've got uh, this sound right here. All right. Got uh, from my performance voice. Got this nice organ. And if I go down here... Got this other synthy sound. And I've got a couple audio sounds in here. This one actually is recorded off the uh, CS1X. Uh, I just needed it to be a little more uh, involved, so I took that sound and layered it with a couple other bits to make it a little thicker and more. It's more of an effect sound. It's not really an instrument in the way I'm using it. But if you go down this list here, you'll see these other things here too. Like These are all set up to be drums. At least out of the box they are but i have all of the channels except for uh channels two three and four so i have channels one and then i have five through 16. Mm -hmm. the way you do this in the cs1x is using sysx data all right let me open this up right here and i created a little shortcut key for myself here which is uh, on mine it's shift alt l to get to list edit mode in list edit mode you can see these little bits of uh code that are going on here they're all control code that is used in MIDI and if you look here these are all like CC0 is the M, uh, MSB bank select CC32 is the LSB bank select and then we have right here uh, which is set to zero on the on this data here and this right here just tells it to be a program change so I can tell it whichever program now if you have your data list uh, you can look at the data list and bring this over here real quick so you can see what I'm looking at and if you look at this you'll see that for example these are the performance sounds in the data list for the CS1X you can see that I'm in MSB 63 which I've got MSB 63 right there and if I bring this to LSB we'll say 4 and then select instrument number whichever one I want so say I pick this door okay it's a, I guess it's like a doors-ish organ, okay? Uh, we'll look over here to the left, and we see that that's number 73. So if I change this to 73, in this list, you'll also notice that there's a door B. What happens when they have their performance sounds, if you had the sound playing, they would use door A as one layer, door B as a second layer. The cool part here is now we can either choose A or B, use one layer if we want. Uh, I'll put this up to the next one. Let's see. You can see that the fifth bank has more of a more of the bassy sound, less of more of the lows, and bank four has most of the highs. If you look at this list and there's nothing, if it's grayed out after, that means bank six and seven have nothing in it. I can go back if I want to and say, okay, well, that's cool. Let me try out this. What's this crom A, crom B? All I've got to do is change right up here to zero. There's no crom C or crom D. We'll go to one more down so that we can see one with four full layers. Okay, we'll go to big up or big em up. 
Let's see, 74. So if we go to sound 74. Okay, here's the zero bank. One bank. Bank two. And bank three. And now we've gone over into the next bank, which is four. So we've skipped over big up to organ percussion. Basically, these are how that's how you pick your layers. If you wanted now, this is kind of where it gets uh, Cubase is very interesting because you can actually uh, take these sounds and there are ways to choose two layers and play them both as one instrument. I will get into that in another video because that's more complex than what we're doing here. But once we've got this sound picked, I'll bring it back over to the... Uh, Alright, so here we are, and we're on uh, bank one, so we're on big em up B. If we look down further, we can see volume, which we can change. You can set a default as 100. Okay, so if you want a little more, you can get a little more out of it. You can change the panning. Right now it's set to center. We've got harmonic and brightness. So you've got resonance and cutoff, cutoff and resonance here. If I go here and change this, you can hear how it's kind of dull compared to... We go all the way up to 127. But this is how you control different sounds. Puts back 64. We've also got attack and release time. So you can kind of do a little bit of sound design sort of right here. So if I say I want this to have a little more release, I can put this up to 80. See that? Or 100. the octave a little so we can have a little less uh, ear piercingness uh let's see uh, if i take my attack right now it's set to 64. let's try messing with this a little bit we'll bring this up to There you go. Now we've got to turn this uh, kind of lead sound into a bit of a pad. Might want to take some of the, the brightness out of it. And then depending what you've got the, uh, the overall effect set to, you can actually change those right here too. Because right now they're set to zero, but if I set this to 80... You can hear that effect kicking in. Anyway, and that's how you get to the other sounds. Uh, this whole MIDI bit here, all these control codes you're looking at right here, all uh, are part of a, a template that I've got here in Cubase. I can share this template with you all so that you can use it uh, with your Cubase and your CS1X so you can get the most... the most out of your CS1X and be able to create a whole track with it instead of just having one sound. Uh, there's a couple other ways to get more out of the CS1X with Cubase and uh, those include, let's see, aside from what we've got going on here, there's also the ability to hook it up so that you can bounce audio down off the CS1X uh, or the MIDI out of the CS1X as audio to your track. So you can use these tracks and then bounce them out as audio so that you can get more and more tracks out of it. I can show you that in another video if you're interested. Let me know what you think. But uh, I'll put this up for you guys uh, so you can take a look and see what's going on here. I actually got most of this code from Yamaha themselves years back. 
it's part of the uh, blue disc, which was uh, included with a special pack that they released for the CS1X to make people understand that this thing was more than what they just saw from it, you know, to see show you that it was a better synth than what people thought it was. I'll include that as a link in the description for you to t check out. Let me know if this is something you all are interested in being able to do, uh, investigate more because I'll go into the, like all the details. I'll give you all the dirt, like how to, uh, get multiple layers of instruments to play at once and be able to play them as one instrument off the CS1X, giving you the abilities to have multiple performances coming off the CS1X in your one performance on one track, essentially in Cubase. Uh, it'll look like one track anyway, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, let me know what you think and I will uh, put that together for y'all. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if this is something you are interested in. If it's not something you're interested in, the CS1X is one of my favorite synthesizers and I really love to explore it and share it, you know, show it and share it with all of you. So while we're waiting for Cubase 13 to make its official debut with the uh, Steinberg store being broken, I figured I would uh, dig into some of this type of thing, especially since uh, the CS1X has kind of seem to uh, resurfaced and become a popular thing. I'm actually looking at possibly getting a second one. Um, I'm not sure yet. I've got to uh, check out the budget, but uh, we'll see what happens. It is a great synthesizer and definitely worth having one of at least. So thanks very much for hanging out with me. I hope you appreciate the video and hopefully it helps you out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Be safe, take care, happy Halloween month. Here we go. Bye for now. Ha <laughs> ha